Welcome to Spitfire Mods. Uh, this is a uh, Scottle IR6000 video. <clears throat> um, we're just going to go over, this video is just to go over the unit itself, uh, show you the uh, capabilities of the unit and pretty much what it's made out of here quick before we um, go into a programming video, which will be our next video. We're not going to do a real extensive video on this unit. Um, we just want to show you the, the capabilities of the unit and give you a little bit of a walkthrough. Um, just to uh, cover all the features, this is a bottom controller for your bottom heat. It has a top controller for your upper heat. The top controller is programmable and it can hold up to uh, nine stages uh, of temperature so that you can program a profile for heating up the, the GPU or doing some rework. You have an upper light switch and an upper fan switch. This upper fan switch runs the fan up in the overhead here and then the fan in the back of the unit is on as soon as you turn it on so that stays on this unit was actually returned it was a customer's unit that was damaged and we wanted to cover that quickly and this this unit had um, had been retrofitted in the in the field uh, by m moving the lower heating element uh, sensor what happened basically was the unit um, was overheated and when it overheated it actually bubbled up bubbled up the housing for the for the programmable controller and when that bubbled up it actually pulled the contacts inside all to an elevated position which broke contact with the controller so it no longer made a solid contact and once that happened um, the unit stopped working now when that happened as well the uh, solid state relays were overheated as well and both the solid state relays melted, the front panel fell off, and you can see they're kind of no longer square, and they're all rippled, and the entire solid state relay heated up to the point where it started to melt itself. Um, ironically, I believe these solid state relays still are working okay. So uh, even though they, they started to melt, they still functioned, um, but we pulled them out anyway and replaced them. Um, the replacement was a... Uh, 25 amp 3 to 23 volt DC trigger uh, input with a output of 24 to 380 volts AC so this is the, the power side and this is the uh, trigger side and um, that replaced the units fine with some DC uh, units uh, once that was done and we replaced this housing uh, the unit was then able to be used again the bottom temperature housing was a little bit melted, but it didn't seem to melt it enough to give it any problems, so we're going to leave that one as is. Uh, everything on it right now is working. We just ran a profile on it and profiled the board. Um, the first thing you'll notice with this unit is it really doesn't fit a PS3 well, and I can't, can't stress that fact enough. This machine is not a PS3 machine. Can you reflow a PS3? You could reflow a PS3. Um, the board's going to hang out over the uh, the bottom heater. Even if you could get it sideways, it would still hang out off the side. Um, you are able to center your GPU enough to um, to do a reflow, and you can get a reflow done on one of these and repair it. But the success rate will definitely drop down a few percent, and that's probably not acceptable in in normal game console repair. So can you get by? You could get by, but it's not recommended for anything as large as a PS3. I would say Xbox or smaller, it's probably going to do a pretty good job. Uh, now, getting into this unit, um, the rack is a very nice rack. It's good for smaller boards, so you probably won't have too much trouble with that. The unit itself comes with a probe. <coughs> comes with a, a lower uh, element probe that is mounted in the front of the unit, and it's tight against the plates. And um, I believe that's where it was originally because that's where we moved it from when we got it. But the the user had pulled it out and and done a similar uh, attachment with it. Um, it is possible that what caused it to overheat is the probe was was not close enough to the plates and therefore didn't register the plate temperature. So the plates heated up until they got red hot and just started melting stuff inside the cabinet. And that's a big thing on this unit. This back fan really doesn't pull much air, and it doesn't seem to draw much air across the plates or anything because it's running when it's on. So it's pretty much just pulling some air across the bottom. But all these parts up in here take a lot of heat abuse. So um, 
even under normal use I would say if you did a lot of reballs this unit would probably get pretty beat up so again not a great unit for large boards because you're going to be running a lot more heat on large boards so we we took the probe from here we routed it it had enough slack so we pulled it across and then we brought it out through we drilled a hole here brought it out and wrapped it in a copper strand uh, of solid core heavy duty um, wire to make it adjustable and then when we put our rack on there our board is sitting just above that sensor um, what that does again is mo modifying your lower probe allows your bottom temperature controller to pretty much control the temperature of the board almost um, the same so when you set this to 180 your board can go to 180 if you use it the way it comes factory you could set the unit to 200 and the board may only get to 140 or 160 degrees now the upper head is a um, is your typical small IR plate unit uh, this is a 220 volt unit so it needs an adapter and it uses a lug to kind of latch itself into place and it has an adjustable uh, height there for your IR um, you will have to do some masking off for your board it is a it, the, the machine definitely runs hot it heats up very fast it has three large plates mounted horizontally in here this is um, the IR6000 I think it's the V3 on that unit um, with the, the larger plates in the bottom so it has a full rack of plates a little bit larger than the older IR6000s and they heat up very quick with a 220 volt converter um, one thing I did notice is at 3000 uh, watts the converter was warming up so definitely use a um, if you can use a 5000 watt converter because your two to three thousand watt converters are going to be taking a little bit of abuse too um, this unit seems to pull quite a bit more juice than the older IR6000 so it's definitely pulling some more wattage with those extra plates in the bottom uh, your on off switch is here you got a nine pin serial port in the back and that pretty much covers this unit and um, that's pretty much just what we wanted to go over uh, was the, the unit itself uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to show a programming video and getting it set up to run a board so that you can uh, watch that next if you'd like to. And thanks for watching.